Hey everyone, it's Lance Sessions, head coach for Bucks Gaming. I want to give you all an update on the news coming out for NBA 2K24 and kind of share my thoughts on some of the information that was released from Mike Wang and the, and the devs from 2K. Uh, mainly, a lot of this will kind of entail around, you know, the competitive scene. Uh, that's really the side that I pay the most attention to, but I'll try to cover as much of the new news as possible that a lot of people haven't covered. Uh, so, number one, we're going to start with the My Player. Uh, so, Mike Wang tweeted out the maximum and minimum heights for every single position so as you can see below a lot of the same positions and heights that we've seen uh, in the past uh, there was a rumor going around that the center was going to be able to be maybe 7.5 i'm very happy to see that 7.3 is just going to be the max height uh i feel like going anything taller was really gonna make the game difficult especially in the competitive level uh so 7.3 centers seven foot power forwards uh, one thing that will be interesting, and this will kind of go into another section of the video, will be, you know, how they balanced out the attributes. We all know the six foot nine was the best build to make. Uh, you could pretty much do everything if you wanted to make one player that can go into each mode and at least be effective. It was that six foot nine uh, player; it could do a little bit of everything. So hopefully, with that, they kind of balanced it out more, where you'll see just a little bit more difference within players. Uh, ultimately, there's always going to be a meta and, you know, YouTube and the comp players are going to set kind of those metas early. Um, but hopefully there's just a little more nuance to everyone's builds, just a little bit. And you're not always running into kind of the same kind of build built players. Uh, so hopefully with the my players, that'll be really the things that I look for the most is just those attributes, how they tie into it. This last year, you know, certain things went up when certain thing like if you upped strength that up certain things so let's just see what this builder the builder will be the biggest part of how powerful the heights will be um you know a six eight point guard that can do everything a six one point guard can do is really what is going to entail you know the my player mode in general so number two we're going to cover badges and animations uh so there's not a lot of info on the badges to be honest they've kind of you know had a little bit of news that they've reworked badges they're more tied to the attributes that they're especially for jump shots so We'll see with that. Um, I hope that that is definitely the case. I, uh, they kind of afforded that badges are an icing on the cake. Um, but one thing that Mike did talk about was that the Limitless Takeoff badge is gone. Uh, and, and also, I'll talk about an animation of the, the Quick Drop Dunk kind of being tied in together. So with Limitless Takeoff being gone, I do think that that is more of what the problem was with some of these animations than anything. Uh, that and also, like, defensive players, even if they got under these animations, like Quick Drop, couldn't take... A player out of it they could still just kind of push them out of the way and so um it'd be interesting to see how guards kind of attack the rim uh quick drops was definitely the meta when it comes to the competitive scene there is another dunk package that was as well but really the quick drop tied in with the limitless takeoff and the ability not to really take them out of the dunk was was very very difficult for defensive teams to be able to affect some point guards uh you would really just pray that you get under the guard and the anchor and you know anchor badge pops up and that ball just kind of pops out it'll it'll be interesting to see how guards really figure it out you know there is still the acrobat layups now those are really powerful uh they've and i'll talk about those in kind of the gameplay part but some of those got nerfed um and so attacking them will be interesting this next game i hope to see more badge information sh soon i'm interested to know you know some of the new badges and how they've reworked some of the badges and things like that but this is already an interesting start to the competitive scene knowing uh, a lot of locks and defensive guys knowing that these guards can't just take off from you know one step two steps inside the the three-point line and and to get a dunk whenever they want number three we'll cover some pro-am and rec uh these this is of course one of my favorite modes um really not a lot of info yet on pro-am I'm, I'm hoping uh since they added wolf a former nba 2k league player to their staff uh to the 2k dev staff that you know there is just a, maybe a little bit more updates or things that can go into the pro MC and I know that he's probably going to do his best to you know just give them what they can I understand it's not an easy job so hopefully just a little bit of stuff maybe they're just kind of delaying it I uh, would love to see like new arenas um, kind of just a new system when it comes to the competitive scene hopefully we get one day a ranked kind of matchup system within the pro -Am scene that actually matters stuff like that but now uh, with the news that has come out more going into the rec side and so this is actually great news uh, for rec players that the uh, rec bots will be noticeably better timing their shots which i do agree with what mike said here about there needing to be a balance you know if you load in with a bot being able to actually hit that player and then the entire other team not ha be able to double team you the entire game is going to be big uh it'll just kind of make people have a little bit more fun with the game but then the other side of it making sure that uh, you know the ai players can't carry 
you know teams to victories you know an ai just hitting every shot or you know just playing on like the hall of fame difficulty kind of stuff so hopefully they do find a good balance to you know the ai's offensive abilities and then on the other side of that uh, the defensive abilities is what really I think people had a problem with was, you know, being able to shoot right over the AI, no contest, they could do a step back, it's wide open. So making hopefully that balance there that the dev team found with being able to, you know, if a player grades out or quits or doesn't load in the game to still be able to make that game effective instead of not wasting an entire amount of time, but you know, going in and you have one AI on your team and you're going to get doubled and they're just going to step back to the AI the whole game. is just, it's not a fun initiative immediately. I think people would rather the AI be competitive and, you know, be a challenge instead of it just being a free win or, you know, making the gameplay way different. And the other side of that, uh, Mike also tweeted that there's, they've, uh, they've added out of bounds has been out of the griefing rules players to grade out. I do think that they should definitely keep upping this part of it there's definitely too many times even myself when i've played rec where a player doesn't get the ball here or there or you know certain things just happen during the game and they either just stop playing they let their player they leave their player wide open they don't move they're running out of bounds they're doing all the type of stuff just to affect your game and again kind of goes back to the ai just making sure that you know whenever you do finally get games that it can be with in instances where you have a chance to win the game so knowing that they're they can grade out with certain things is always nice and the last thing a small nuance uh really to the competitive scene but that's something i really like to see uh that they talked about is casual inbound passes and otherwise unremarkable motions that aren't a priority during mocap have now been scanned to cover even the most minute details uh the totality of the movements results in an entirely new level of legitimacy so how I take this is hopefully there's no in pass animations for on inbounds to your player because there's too many times in competitive pro am some of the best defensive players in the world can get two or three turnovers just standing in the way. And really what happens is you're moving on the baseline, your point guards on your left, the locks in between them, you move your player right in front of your point guard. He's on your left, but the animation gives you a right-handed pass and it just hits the lock right in the chest and they get a steal. So I hope that there's a little bit more mechanical, you know, adjustments to that where it can recognize that your player is on the left and use the left hand to pass it to him. So it's just straight to the player instead of, yes, you're inbounding it. You tried your best, but it gave you a right-handed animation. So a small thing, but, and, you know, in all competitive scenes, just a few turnovers can really cost someone a game. So knowing that they've hopefully rework that system is going to be huge for the pro-am scene uh, number four we're going to cover some jump shots and some news around it uh, that's probably gonna be one of the most popular sections of this everyone's really wanting to know the information on you know what three-point rating they need the jump shot they need to use all those types of things so here's a few tweets and things i'll cover mike really talked about making sure to create a jumper with the highest grades you can uh, so making sure that you know all four categories are as maxed out as they can be um, he really put emphasis on defensive immunity. Uh, it can have a strong, stronger effect than most think. I'm not really sure what that means, but maybe it goes into just the contest system, which again, he also tweeted this, an A plus will reduce the contest score by 30% and F will boost it by 30%. So on the defensive immunity, uh, it seems like this is gonna be a key area to really help stop the contests on your jump shots. So really making sure not, not just jump speed or jump shot speed is the number one thing you look at that you're also kind of paying attention to uh, those types of things. Um, he also tweeted that the change of shot timing impact shooting attribute to shot timing stability, higher stability grades will further dampen the effects and fatigue of defense on your shot speed. So making sure, you know, to just create a jumper with all as high A's as you can get is going to ultimately give you the best jump shot. Um, I hope though with this is that maybe there's a little, little more variety with the jump shots. I felt like this last year, if you weren't using a handful of jump shots in certain releases, you were, you know, not giving yourself the best ability to make shots. But I understand that's a tough ask because, you know, there has to be the best, you know, combinations for a reason. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see kind of how they, they kind of go about that to make sure, you know, if it is, you know, a handful of jump shots, that's fine. But really making sure that, you know you have the variety to create as many a kind of jump shots as you can uh, once you learn your jump shot of course mike also tweeted that there's going to be a buff it'll increase your green window size by 20 percent if you turn off your jump shot timing so 
really make sure you get in there, learn your jump shot, you know, do what you can, play the games with the meter on a little bit. Uh, learn your jump shot timing online, and yeah, then take it, take that meter off immediately. And it's really going to probably improve your shooting. Uh, if the we if the green window size is 20% larger, uh, I can only imagine that's really going to help a lot of people. Yeah, really just being able to learn your the cue of your jumper, but a lot of that stuff they said that that is edit editable now. Like you can change all of those nuances of your jumper. It's not preset last year. It's like early and late and all that type of stuff. You can actually set where you want to the ball to be able to be released. So we'll see kind of how you know in depth they go with that. Uh, some things with jump shots, fades got a buff in the mid range, a big nerf at the three. So again, this kind of goes back to what I talked about with the quick drops being taken out is. If you're going to take out one thing, hopefully, you know, they add in on the other side of it, the ability to score in other ways a little better. So, you know, with guards and players not being able to just get those dunks off, you know, and then, then they nerf the acrobat layup, you know, what is going to be the, the easiest or best way to score? And, you know, there shouldn't just be a an abusive way to score, um, but still being able to make sure even just with this if they take out you know they 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 buff the mid ranges fades they nerf the three we all know in the competitive scene if you've played it in the high comp scene you know the it's called a fat stop it's an animation to get in front of the lock and it's almost screenable every single time you do it um and so for guards if if that's really like your go-to it's going to be abused as much as possible but now there's a whole new adrenaline system and things like that so they help guards be able to keep dribbling uh, but hopefully animations are added, maybe a quick stops are back, or there's other things to make sure that, you know, guards can get their shot off, really making sure the contest system is right, because if guards can't just come off a screen and fade, now they really need to create space and, and on their own, and if a lock closes out late, even though, you know, you did everything because you can't fade or anything like that, I just hope that they find a good balance. Uh, in between taking away and nerfing certain things with guards, but also still giving them the ability to be effective. Um, and then just a funny tweet that I wanted to talk about. The greens are still delayed because uh, Mike Wing likes it that way. I actually don't mind the delayed green window. I just want, I just hope that they keep making sure that after you shoot it, you know, you can definitely tell if it's in or out, but sometimes it still changes. Like it'll look like it's 100% in and your player does everything it looks like to green it and then it misses there are certain animations you get after that's like that's 100 percent of green but i think that one's funny and then the last one we'll talk about uh they changed the contest system a lot uh the main highlights were uh body position instead of hand location and you put in quotation big reason for ghost contest complaints last year there's penalties for being crowded at the start of the jump shot and then less for late closeouts uh with this one i think it's important to know that hopefully this is worded right because I do think ghost contests were more about body position in the past where if you go to take a jumper and the locks on your left the hands aren't up they're just kind of standing by you and it ends up being like you know a 24 percent contest uh, I think most people would want the body position where the lock has to be in front of you and a hand up uh, not just a hand up on your side those types of things so hopefully that the contest system is actually um, kind of fixed the right way but also the same thing with that hopefully mike and the dev team again and i'll always say this pay attention to the high competitive scenes first um and really take their data and their analysis of what's going on from there and then translate that into you know maybe rec or non-stage but park like the or more of your casual players play and i understand that that's the basis of the game but um i think you're going to get your best scenarios with those high competitive players versus, you know, listening to rec first or just casual park, you know, stage players are fine. Those are the, some of the best players in the world as well. So uh, I would really hope that that's where they start with that to keep adjusting it because it's not going to be perfect, but hopefully, you know, they took steps in the right way with this. And the last topic we'll cover will be gameplay. Uh, just a few tweets I thought were kind of interesting. So like I talked about earlier, uh, they, they spoke about that they uh, slightly nerfed changing shot in midair especially for lower rated players i do agree if you have a low layup that you know just because you're acrobatting maybe it shouldn't be wide open so really put an emphasis on the finishing players being able to really utilize that better um, but again like i spoke about one going too much but if you can't quick drop dunk you can't dunk like that and they nerfed um 
acrobats again how is it how are guards going to be able to score so really being able to make sure that there's a balance to that system which i'm sure there there will be uh second one will be uh defensive adrenaline bars so first bar set to seven and a half 15 and 50 um i do like this aspect of it i there is going to be a right balance to find with how much it negatively impacts defensive players attributes and things like that but you know stopping the spammers is always good uh but also again like the competitive scene you know power forwards or play, people playing the back end uh sometimes you need to use all three of those reaches and and things like that so you know find a balance and not just penalize also for good defense but it's also i get why they need to implement this um yeah it's all about finding the right percentages but i do like the idea uh, the takeover system was reworked. Uh, they talked a lot about that. Uh, I won't go into too much depth, but you don't have a clear-cut takeover anymore. It's going to be during the game when you do fill your takeover meter, meter you're going to be able to select you know, offense, defense, playmaking, all those types of things, and then you'll get a 10-point boost to those attributes. And then another tweet that went with this is that takeover can temporarily boost your ratings over 99, and it will make a difference. So... That'll be very interesting if you have, let's say, a lockdown, you have a 99 steal, 99 perimeter defense, and you get your defensive takeover, now you have 109, you know, how powerful is that? Or in those scenarios where your defense is already that high, do you should you go somewhere else with it? It'll be interesting to kind of see the strengths of that. Uh, and then the last thing we'll cover here will be the pass accuracy. I do think this is something that competitive players want to hear about. Pass accuracy's impact on the types and speeds of your pass will be very similar to 23 try different pass styles too that make a big difference so i'm fine with the pass speed being tied into pass accuracy but i just hope that the threshold once passed will give you every time if not most of the time those faster pass animations and those in the right scenarios there's too many times in the the comp scene where you know you make a read perfect you throw it and it's just a slow pass that gets there even though the conditions are right there's no one in the lane those types of things so uh, definitely tried a lot of the different pass styles just to ensure that you have the fastest ability to pass the ball but I really do hope that there's thresholds where a 60 pass accuracy and a 92 pass accuracy the passes don't get there the same way or if they do like I said a little bit more efficient or more times that the higher one will get the, the pass there in, in a faster way. And that'll be it for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the stuff we covered, please drop a comment. I'll make a video on those types of things or just answer them in general. I do have a Discord in the description below if you want to join. I'm looking for players for 2K24 who want to play the game with myself. I play Pro-Am, Rec, all those types of things. Going to be making content or just learning the game. So if any of that interests you, uh, consider looking into it. And I'll see you in the next one.